God is good. All the time. All the time. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, welcome to this time of worship as we celebrate Christ on this absolutely gorgeous Sunday morning. We are glad you are here. We celebrate Jesus Christ here at this place. And also, we celebrate our veterans on this Veterans Sunday. Uh, we celebrate those that, that uh, fought for our country so we could, we could be here in freedom and, and worship our Lord and our Savior here this morning. So we recognize our, our veterans this morning. We thank them for their service and, and also remember those who are still in active duty. So it's, a, it's definitely a holy time for our congregation. And we welcome all of those who are, who are here to, and visiting with us especially. We are really glad you are here this morning. 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 Today is Veterans Sunday, and as part of that recognition, we have a color guard made up of members of the Christian Motorcyclist Association, chapters Lord's Cavalry, Buckeye Believers, and Messiah's Knights. We welcome our color guard and additional members of the Christian Motorcyclist Association to our service today. A few bikes will be available for review outside, and there's an info display down in Fellowship Hall. Jesus Christ said in Mark 12, verse 17, Give back to Caesar what is Caesar's, and to God what is God's. We come here today to worship our Lord God through Jesus Christ our Savior, empowered by the Holy Spirit. We do not worship the flag of the United States, nor do we worship the Christian flag. Rather, we show honor and respect for these flags and what they represent to us as we worship here freely and openly as Christian brothers and sisters. The cross is the center of our focus, flanked on either side and supported by the American flag and the Christian flag. We can interpret the colors and symbols of the Christian flag. The field is white, representing peace, purity, and holiness. The blue canton is emblematic of loyalty and truth, and possibly of heaven or the waters of baptism. The cross in the center of the blue canton is, of course, a symbol of Christ and his work of salvation. The cross is red, typical of Christ's shed blood. Taken together, the symbols of the Christian flag portray the basics of the faith. Jesus Christ, the Holy One, died on the cross to grant us salvation, and we serve him in fidelity and holiness as he is faithful to us. The Christian flag is the only free flag in the world. It is different from every other flag, religious or secular, ancient or modern. It is uncontrolled, independent, and universal. Unlike all national flags and all denominational flags of various churches, it has no earthly bonds or allegiances. Christ and Christ alone is its master. Without limitation, it exists for all the world's people, regardless of sex, race, national boundary, economic condition, affluence or poverty, politics, slavery, or freedom. It cannot be restricted by any nation or denomination. This unique, universal quality makes it like the air we breathe, belonging to all and yet owned by none. For those who want it, wherever and whenever, it is freely theirs. The American flag is a symbol not only of hardiness, valor, purity, innocence, vigilance, perseverance, and justice, it is a symbol of freedom. Freedom that has been fought so hard for over the decades by our men and women in the armed forces. Freedom that has cost this country and the families within so much, and yet it is still a beacon to those wishing they had the freedom that our country has. The American flag is representative of our constitutionally protected right provided in the religion clauses of the First Amendment. Now you already saw the bikers coming in and they're starting to assemble in the back as our color guard. As Soon as they get ready, we will ask that you would stand um, as the color guard brings in the colors and we will be singing God Bless America followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. So bear with me a moment as they get unraveled from their biker paraphernalia in the cold. We had a dress rehearsal. (laughs) 
Here they come. Please stand and join in God Bless America. God Bless America. White with foam, God bless America, my home, sweet home. God bless America, my home, sweet home. God bless America. To the prairies, to the oceans, white with foam. God bless America, my home, sweet home. God bless America, my home, sweet. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. How is everybody today? Amen. We're glad you're here. We are glad that you are worshiping with us. We're going to remain standing. Oh, 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 oh. Remain standing. It was almost like a wave, Tom. It was nice. It was nice. All right, Cindy, start. Yep. We're going to need your help. We're going to need some hands together. You want to keep them going? Yours will be the only name that matters to me The only one whose favor I seek The only name that matters to me Yours will be The friendship and affection I need Sounding good To feel my father smiling on me The only name that matters to me The name of Jesus and yours is the name, the name that saved me, mercy and grace, the power that forgave me, and your love is all I've ever needed. When I wake up in the land of glory, with the saints I will tell my story, there will be one name that I proclaim. Tell my story There will be one name That I proclaim The only name that matters to me The only one whose favor I see The only name that matters to me Yours is the name And yours is the name The name that saved me Mercy and grace, the power that forgave me, and your love is all I've ever needed. Let me hear you when I wake up. When I wake up in the land of glory, with the saints I will tell my story. There will be one name that I proclaim. Sing it one more time again. When I wake up in the land one name that I proclaim. 
la 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 Here you say Jesus. Jesus. That's it. Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Jesus. Just that name. When I wake up, here we go again. When I wake up in the land of glory with the saints, I will tell my story. There will be one name that I proclaim. Amen. Give the Lord some praise this morning. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father God, for today. We call upon you now in the precious name of your Son, Jesus Christ, giving you all glory, praise, and honor that you are due. We thank you for the men and women who have served this country well, who are continuing to protect us and give us the freedoms that God forgive us for taking for granted. But we are here today as one body of believers in one of your many houses of worship. We thank you for your presence here. We know that when two or three are gathered, you are in the midst. And the only name that we will proclaim is Jesus Christ and him crucified. We thank you for today. We ask for your continued anointing upon Pastor Tom and all who partake in this blessed service this morning. In Jesus' name, all of God's children shouted, Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Sailor Jerry is a Navy veteran from central Minnesota. While serving in the U.S. Navy, she worked as an aviation mechanic on F-A-18s with the VFA-83 Rampagers. In April of 2017, she wrote and posted Hallelujah, the Veterans Version. Since then, it has been viewed over 88 million times. Hallelujah, Veterans Version was actually written for the members of G4G Covert Ops, a site for veterans, but the song is meant for everyone in the military. While the video is playing, and uh, Cleveland Motorcyclists, you have to help with this because there's not as many veterans at this service as there was at the last. <laughs> but while the video is playing, I would ask that all of our veterans that are able to please come up front or stand where you are for recognition once the video is ended. And we thank you for your service. your bags and shut the door you crossed the sea to fight a war you didn't know just what would happen to ya stepped in the dirt boots on the ground and gunfire was the only sound and to yourself you whispered hallelujah hallelujah Every day. 
ladies and gentlemen, our veterans. thinks they're going to stop clapping. That's all right. That's all right. You heard this an hour or so ago, but I'll tell you again from the bottom of my heart and all these people standing around. One of the things we're going to hear a little bit of preaching on this morning is why we do what we do. And you men and you women did what you did for all of us who weren't serving. You did what you did because you love your country, but you love the people within the country. And I just want to thank you as a, as a pastor and as a, as a citizen of this incredible nation. Thank you for your service. You are blessed by God. And what you're doing also, which I think is pretty good, it's great. I see on the back of your vest and everything, you're continuing the proclamation. You're keeping the word of God alive. Just as you kept us alive and keep this nation alive, you're keeping the word of God alive in all of your ministry. And I want to thank you, you folks for that. But for all of our veterans here, thank you. Let me offer a prayer. Lord Jesus, we thank you for the dedication of these brave souls that are here this morning and all of those throughout our nation, throughout the world, Lord God, that, that continue to fight to, to keep us free, to keep us uh, having the privilege of being able to come here in freedom and, and, and praise your holy name, Lord God. Uh, bless these saints that are before us here this morning. Bless them with, uh, and keep them in, in your stead. Uh, keep them courageous in their proclamation of you as they continue on the journey that you have set before them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Y'all may be seated. One of the joys of being a Christian is serving the Lord. In fact, that is, a, that is beyond the privilege uh, to be able to do the work of the Lord. We're not volunteers here. We are not uh, paid to do things. We, we do things because we love the Lord so much and we just want so much for all those outside these walls. And there's a lot going on in the life of our church. If you just look at the bulletin or, or online or we have, a, we have a great newsletter in the back and everything, a lot's happening in the life of the church. And just wanted to, to highlight a little bit here for you. If you are struggling during the holidays, First and foremost, with the loss of a loved one or, or just having a tough time, at 2 o'clock this afternoon, we have a little uh, respite for you all uh, called Surviving the Holidays. And if you, would, you are more than welcome to attend that, 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 that gathering, that will be here. Uh, I'm not sure where you're going to meet. Is someone sanctuary. in the sanctuary here? So 2 o'clock uh, for that. Also, uh, we are entering a very busy time of year. Uh, Chuck, you know that. We have all kinds of stuff going on. Uh, we have a cookie walk. And for those of you, uh, and, that's, and that's all for the mission of the church, on, on December 9th, if you like to bake cookies, uh, chocolate chip or preferred, no. Um, there, is a, there is a sign up sheet in the back. If you wanna donate cookies to the cookie walk, you usually have to have them here a day or two before uh, December 9th. And so uh, just sign up, let us know you're going to bring some cookies, all kinds of different things. Uh, we have Search for the Christ Child. And what that is, is we actually reconfigure our entire building and make it look like early Israel, early Bethlehem. And we start out with, uh, out in the back with, with goats and shepherds and fire and, and just have a little conversation and you, and you journey all the way through. Well, that requires a lot of servants to help that, help facilitate that. So if you are interested in, in, in uh, serving the Lord through that ministry, uh, please see, Michael, will you stand up a second? Uh, see Michael Kelly uh, and Diane. 
or there's a sign-up sheet down the hall. So please, please do that. We also have some uh, busy things going on with our youth. And I'll ask our youth guru to come forward. There you go. There you go. Thanks, Ben. Good morning, guys. Um, this is a very busy time of year for the youth group as well, um, starting with All Saints Sunday last week. And this week, um, right after service, we will be leaving 13 of us down to um, Wadsworth to participate in Project Feed. This will be our third year doing so. Um, this is a ministry of the East Ohio Conference, and there was an event yesterday in Newcomerstown where they packed 25,000 meals um, in support of Stop Hunger Now. We will be doing so again today, another 25,000 meal packets to be shipped overseas, um, and some will remain locally. Each one of those meals that we pack feeds um, a family of four to six. So in the last 24 and, and this 24 hours, we will be providing about 200,000 meals. Wow. Those of you that are going with us today, no jewelry. Leave your jewelry with your mom and dad. It cannot go into the food packing area. Bring your brown bag lunch, your $5, and your canned good donation to the local food bank down to the youth room. We're going to chow down, get on the road. Parents, we will be back between 5 and 5.30. Cell phones will be passed around in the back of the cars to call you when we're on our way home. Now, next week, we leave Friday at 6 p.m. for our fall retreat at Camp Asbury. There are 17 or 18 of us going. Please be here and be ready. If you need the packing list again, I'll be posting it on the Facebook page. Um, we will be going down not just to have a good time and eat and play and have fun, um, but we will also be studying um, how we can live a life that is bigger than ourselves for Jesus Christ. And we will be doing so by studying some heroes of faith, Jacob and Ruth and Job and Jonah. So again, we will be leaving Friday at 6. Have all your stuff. Dress for cold, wet weather. We will be out in it. It is supposed to be cold and wet. So boots, preferably not suede fancy boots, lots of socks, and warm stuff. Yes, if you do mother. not have a registration form, yeah. <laughs> if you do not have a registration form filled out already for this year, please see me or text me, and I will get you one of those before next weekend. Okay? Thanks, guys. I appreciate uh, the church's support, and we'll see the kids down in the youth room right after service. Thank you, Beth. We're done. We're done. Thank you, Beth, for your ministry and the youth. Thank you for your ministry. Feeding, feeding the hungry is, is what we are called by Jesus Christ to do. So thank you for that, for that ministry. Uh, much is going on. A lot of joy. A lot of, a lot of celebration. Also a lot of concerns. Yeah. We got Thanksgiving coming up, correct? Yes. How many people travel for Thanksgiving? How many people go somewhere for Thanksgiving weekend? It's a popular, popular uh, trek to go somewhere. Well, Tom, we have Wednesday night worship before Thanksgiving. That's what right. do you say we make that the place to be? Let's, so Wednesday night before Thanksgiving Day, That's what I'm thinking. we're going to have a Thanksgiving service here at Fields, worship right. service here at Fields at 730. That's fantastic. Mar, what do you think? Not so much themed Thanksgiving, but a service to get everybody in the spirit before the All busy right. weekend. All right. So if you're not going to be here this, uh, that Sunday, Thanksgiving weekend, come Wednesday evening. Great. It'll be a great time of, of, of celebration of the Lord's presence. Very good. Many joys, many concerns. Uh, please note those on the prayer list. I have a few I'd like to add. If you please pray for Levi, who is leaving, uh, deployed through the Navy here, I believe, uh, next week. Prayers for Mark in his final uh, days here on earth. He is in hospice and struggling as we speak. Please pray for Ann Farkas. Also, the families in our nation and the church as we, as we struggle with the loss uh, down in Sutherland Springs uh, First Baptist Church. Please pray for... Um, for those folks, pray, pray for the church, pray, pray for healing, and pray for peace for them. Also, if you're keeping your thoughts and prayers to family and friends of Doris Cole and the family and friends of Dennis, are there any other concerns or joys of the church here this morning? Yes, Anna.
prayers for George and prayers for healing for George. All right. Anyone else? Let's then go to God in silent prayer. God of grace and God of glory. On your people pour your power. Pour the power of your Holy Spirit upon us this morning as we come here to give you worship and praise. To, to seek a, a closer relationship with you, Lord God, our creator and our redeemer through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ who hung on that old uh, old rounded cross, Lord God, and on the third day rose so we can live a new life, a transformed life in you, Lord God. We, we give you thanks for being with us during our time of joy, during our time of need, and everywhere in between. Lord God, thank you for picking us up when we go off the path and, and, and bring us back in line, Lord God. Thank you for your redeeming presence and your forgiving grace in our lives. As we, we gather here in your house this day, we give you thanks for the brave women, women and men who stand up for what is right, for, for to protect those that, that need their, their help in their lives. Lord God, we thank you for, for the veterans of our nation uh, who are here and throughout our nation and world. Thank you for their service to their country. Most importantly, Lord God, thank you for their service to you as they bring peace uh, in, the, in, in our world during our times. Thank you, Lord God, anoint them uh, with your spirit that they may continue uh, the courageous fight uh, with your mighty word in their hand and in their heart, Lord God, as they go forth proclaiming uh, your word that, that has the, the opportunity to change lives in our, in our world. Lord God, we gather here this day with joy. We come here to celebrate so much in our lives, Lord. We celebrate family, friends. We celebrate uh, doing your work, Lord God, through this place so all may come to know of you in their lives. Lord God, we, we come here with joy, but at the same time, uh, our hearts are weighed down with those things that just uh, we do not understand. Lord God, we do pray for the families and, and the friends and the community of Southern Springs, Texas, as they grieve the loss of so many at First Baptist Church, Lord God. Uh, we grieve, we grieve that as well, Lord, and we just pray for for wisdom, to understand how we can go forth from this point on, Lord God. We, we pray for the victims. We also pray for those that, that have a, a, a darkness in their soul to cause such things, Lord God. Uh, transform their lives so these senseless things will no longer occur um, in our world. Lord God, we, we do pray for all those throughout the world that are in need of your healing presence and saving grace. We pray for those who are far away from home and in in the midst of war and insurrection, Lord God. We pray for our great nation and our leaders. Um, we pray that our leaders may have your word firmly upon their lips. Lord God, we pray for our communities, our community leaders. We pray for our schools, administrators, support staff, teachers, and we pray for our children. Uh, keep them safe from harm, Lord God. Give them the wisdom and, and the joy of knowing you as well. Lord God, we pray for those who cannot be here this day, those who are traveling, travel blessings upon them. We pray for those who are homebound, uh, who are in hospitalized, who are grieving the loss of loved ones in their lives as well. And this morning we lift up the family and friends of Charlie O'Neill, the family and friends of Brian Demoy, the family and friends of Doris Cole, and the family and friends of Dennis. Lord God, in the midst of their grief, may there be joy with affirmation of everlasting life for those they have lost. Lord God, we pray for first responders. We pray for the medical community that they may use the gifts you've given them uh, to make people well. 
Lord God, we pray for those who, are, who surround their loved ones seven days a week, 24 hours a day with love and care. Give them wisdom, give them discernment, give them courage, give them comfort, give them any, everything they need. Lord God, this morning we lift up to you Levi and Mark and Janet, for Adam and Edna and Barbara, for Claudia's granddaughter, for Doug and Ann and George, for Dean and Jean and Catherine and Melanie, for Savannah, for Nancy, for Dwight and Nancy and Beverly and Abigail, for Michael and Megan, for Casey and Jenny, and for all those others, Lord God, that we've lifted up by voice or deep within our souls. Lord God, we pray your Holy Spirit rest upon each and every one that they may be healed in body and in soul. Lord God, we also pray for the gifts that we'll be offering to you here this morning. Bless them, magnify them for your continued work uh, throughout the world. These things we pray through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who through his disciples taught us to pray boldly together, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth that it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now as reconciled children of God, let us offer our tithes and our offerings. Oh, 
around you took the phone and thought of me above like a rose like a rose trampled on the ground you took the phone and thought of me letter to the Philippians. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again. Rejoice. Amen. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Jesus Christ. So hear the word of the Lord. I would like to invite all the children and youth and any adults who feel like children to come down front. Join me. We'll see. Oh, really? Oh, we have lots of friends. Come on. Oh, look at those sparkly boots. Those are fun. <laughs> All right, so yeah, sometimes I get really hungry in church. And so I brought lunch, and I got all the stuff I need. I got a napkin. And I got a spoon. You would eat the napkin? Yeah. Oh, goodness. And I got a bowl. What could I be having for lunch? Soup, soup. soup, but look, I forgot the most important thing. Bag. That'll be a sad lunch, won't it? Yeah, because I forgot the most important part of my lunch. I didn't bring the soup. You can still eat the paper bag. Ugh, I don't want to eat the paper bag. Or you can eat the napkin or the spoon. I don't want to do that either. I'll just have to wait till later. But you know what? That may seem kind of silly. To get everything ready, to work hard and to get the spoon and the napkin and the bowl and to pack it all neatly and then forget the soup. Does that seem silly to you? Yeah, that kind of seems silly, doesn't it? But we do stuff like that. We do, because we get so busy that we get to do all sorts of things, and then we forget the most important thing. Let me tell you what I mean. So today, in our Bible story, Jesus and his disciples went to visit two ladies named Mary and Martha. And because there were so many people that came over, Martha was really busy, right? Because she had to feed all those people lunch. Yeah. So she's in the kitchen, and she's cooking, and she's making everything ready. She's trying to be the hostess with the mostess. And you know what Mary's doing? Can you guess what Mary's doing? Do you think she's helping her? She's sitting at Jesus' feet, listening to Jesus teach. So Martha got a little annoyed by that. Can you imagine? Yeah. So she, she went up to Jesus, and she said, Jesus... Do you see Mary just sitting there? I need help. I'm cooking all this food. Tell her to come help me. Do you know what Jesus said? He said, Martha, you're so worried about all the details. You're so busy. But Mary has found out what is the most important, and she's doing that. So we need to let her do that. So now, Jesus is not telling Martha that she's doing anything wrong because Martha's doing wonderful things, right? She's being very welcoming. She's cooking, she's cleaning, she's making everything ready, she's making everyone feel welcome, and that's a good thing. But Mary was also doing a really good thing, because can you imagine anything better than getting a chance to sit and listen to Jesus, right? So here's the thing. When we are busy and we're doing all our things for school and our activities and we play and we do whatever we do, what is the most important thing we need to remember? that we need to make time for Jesus in our day because Jesus is the most important thing. So we shouldn't do so many other good things that we forget all about the most important thing. Will you pray with me? Fold your hands. Jesus, thank you so much for all the wonderful things that you give us to do every day, all these things that keep us so very busy. But Jesus, help us to find time to spend with you because that is so important. It is the most important. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Very good. You might may go to junior church. Go line up at the door.
Gosh, Mara, that's the second time you've done this and you still forgot your soup. Isn't that specific? <laughs> oh, we'll be praying for you. Let's pray. Lord God, open our hearts and minds by the power and presence of your Holy Spirit that as this scripture is read and proclaimed that we may be filled, filled to the max with you, Lord God, filled with the, with the power of the ages, filled, Lord God, with salvation of our souls, filled, Lord God, with hope, with peace and your love. Now, Lord God, may your word come through me or in spite of me. Thank you, Lord, for yet one more opportunity for us to try to get it right. Amen. Pretty familiar story here according to the Gospel of St. Luke. Conversation concerning two sisters. Now as they went on their way, he entered a certain village where a woman named Martha welcomed him into her home. She had a sister named Mary who sat at the Lord's feet and listened to what he was saying. But Martha was distracted by her many tasks. So she came to him and asked, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to do all the work by myself? Tell her then to help me. But the Lord answered her, Martha, Martha, Martha. You are worried and distracted by many things. There is need of only one thing. Mary has chosen the better part, which will not be taken away from her. This has been an interesting text for the, me this week. I want to ask you a question. Have you ever been fighting with God? Have you ever fought with God? Well, I've been fighting with God all week long. And it's all I have to say that. God always wins. So if you want to go that route, that's fine. But just know that God always wins. But God still makes us feel good along that direction as well. What this is about is not so much what we do, but why we do what we do. You see, Martha was a doer. She wanted to get things done. She may have been the type to clean a house two weeks prior before any company came only to see after a week that the house was dirty again and had to do it all over again. But she wanted to make sure everything was just right because there's nothing better than being a good host and having everything just perfect. That's who Martha was. Martha was a doer. Nothing wrong with that. We need Marthas in the world to be sure. But she was all about welcoming Jesus and probably a whole cast of folks into her home. And she was all about doing the tasks that were set before her. I envisioned that she had a list. And she stuck with it. She probably had post-it notes all over the place. She had her, her cell phone on. And, and I have a post-it note too. That's what my problem was with God all week. I said, God, what's wrong with post-it notes? I have a list for everything, you see. I have a list for what I'm going to be doing the next two weeks. I have a list for what's going to be doing tomorrow and next week. I have a list for Pastor Mar. We're going to talk about tomorrow morning. It's not a very long list, Mar. I promise you it shouldn't be too bad this week. But I have all these lists. And I thought, God, isn't that what you want us to do? Don't you want us to do your work? And God kept saying... You might want to rethink how you do things just a little bit. Martha was a doer. And Martha looked at a little sister, and the Bible doesn't say whether a little sister or not. I have a little brother, so I can say a little sister. A little sister wasn't doing anything. And so the big sister went to the little sister and said, you got to help me. you got all these dishes to do, all this stuff. Now the big guy comes, and, and Martha asks, Jesus, Jesus, you're the boss. You tell my little sister to help me. And, and that's when it happened. Martha. Martha. You know God is serious when God says your name more than once. Martha. Martha. You are distracted by your lists. You are distracted by what you're doing. And you forgot the most important thing. 
in all the world. Mary has chosen the right way. Mary has chosen what is best. You see, God wants more than anything else in the world a relationship with us. God wants more than anything else in the world the opportunity to come to get to know you more than anything else in the world. Yet sometimes we become so preoccupied with our tasks. Sometimes we get so involved in what we are doing that we forget about our whys. In my conversation with the veterans here this morning, they did what they did. That is what you do. What you continue to do is witness for the Lord. But also have to know why you do it. I mean, we are why you did what you did for the nation. But now you're out and you're proclaiming something even more profound. Because what you are doing and the whys are awfully important. The why is that God wants us each to witness this good news, this thing that cannot be taken away, this precious gift that is so important in everybody's lives that God is saying, get out. Get to know the people. Tell them about me. But first, come to know me a little bit. But so often we don't take the time to do that. I'll have to confess, I've had, this is only the second confession and the last one I promise because it's getting close to lunchtime. But I used to tell God, I said, God, I can get into a good relationship with you while I'm doing dishes. I can get into a good relationship with you while I'm cutting the grass. Somebody did tell me they can hear my preaching on the lawnmower. I thought the, I thought the motor would kind of drown that out, but that's not the case. Just FYI, if you have. I said, God, I can, I can get to know you a little bit driving around and talking to you, and I can, I can get to know you a little bit. But God kept saying, no, I want a little bit more. What's your name? Rick? I want to be your buddy. Rick? Or T-Bone? Chaplain T-Bone. Chaplain T-Bone Rick. No, I'm going to stop right, right there. Right there, I'm going to stop. Okay, so Rick, I want to be your friend, but I start walking away. That doesn't make any sense, does it? If I want to get to know Rick, if I really want to get to know why he is called T-Bone, or his calling that God has placed upon his soul to be a chaplain to this group, I have to talk to you, don't I? I have to get to know who you are. And you have to get to know who I am. In fact, you want to do that, and I want to do that. That's what a friendship is all about. But if we don't do that with God, guess what? We don't know God, do we? We don't know what God has uh, as planned for us. We don't know any of that stuff. So God is saying, step back from all your stuff, you Marthas of the world, and just talk to me and listen to me. All the other stuff will get done. Take it from a type A. You know, we still need our post-it notes because we forget everything. But why are we doing it? So God is saying, choose wisely. Understand why we do what we do. This world needs Jesus Christ even more than ever before. The world needs the church to be the church. And to be the church, we need to go out beyond this place and that same intimate relationship that we have with God, we need to share that with somebody else because they need that same relationship. Somebody said, well, how can we have an end to all this violence and all this insurrection and all this hatred and all this stuff? Well, maybe the people of God, if we stand up and we say, this is the way to live. This is what it's all about. That's what God wants. Take a look at the Bible. 
the Old Testament, a lot of folks don't like to read the Old Testament because it's violent. You know why it's violent? Because we're violent. God had to, God had to intercede into our world. And that world is not often a very pretty place to be, but God catches us where we are, hoping upon hope that we will end up where God would like us to be. And through all throughout our salvation history, that is the case. And God never gave up on you, never gave up on me, never gave up on anybody. Once that relationship. And God wants us to live this life. Well, not just a life. According to John 10, 10, I want to give you life, Jesus says, in abundance. Well, life in abundance is all about knowing the joy, knowing the hope, knowing the affirmation, knowing that wherever you are, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is standing in the gap for us. That is the joy. That is living life in abundance. And we need to let people know that. We need to let people know that, that, that church is just not about uh, getting our all dressed up and ready to go. Church is not about just singing and all that. That's all pretty good stuff. But it goes so much deeper than that, so much more profound than that. See, Martha was kind of scratching the surface. Mary just stopped and sat at the feet of the master and let the master speak. Sometimes we do that through Bible study. Sometimes we do that through worship. Sometimes we do that just by sitting around with a cup of coffee and a, and a donut or, or a bowl of fruit, which would be a lot healthier. And we talk about things of God. And when the people of God start talking, you know what's interesting? I go down to my office down the street here to Panera's and we start, we start talking there once in a while. And, 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 and you know what I'm seeing? Our, our ministerial group meets there on the second, second Wednesday of every month at 10 o'clock. I'm, I'm seeing people listen to us. People are listening. People are hungry. People want this word. That, that, that became flesh and dwelled among us. People want that. People need that. They got to have it. They got to have it. Jesus won't give up on us either. One more story, then it's time for lunch, is that when Jesus was resurrected from the dead, he gathered, he came through a locked door, and he gathered with 11 disciples and said, Peace I, I leave with you, and breathed upon them the Holy Spirit. The only person who wasn't there was Thomas. He was out playing golf because it was Sunday morning, and he wasn't there. Well, he came back, and, and the disciples told him uh, what had happened. He said, I don't believe that. Until I see the, the, the holes in his hand and in his side, I'm not going to believe that. But Jesus didn't even give up on Thomas. Came right back and said, Thomas... Here's the holes that you put in my hand. Put your finger through and in the side. Jesus wanted Thomas to be a, in relationship with him so much that he came back a second time, and I bet you he came back a third, fourth, fifth, sixth, however long it takes. So how do you do it? Just stop every once in a while. Take 10 minutes. And then it's going to end up with 15, 20. You ever talk with a good friend and you just keep talking? Just put down what you're doing for a little bit. If you have to stare at the wall, stare at the wall. Be in relationship with your Lord and your Savior. He, who wants more than anything else to have a relationship with you. Take the time. Just do it. Do the dishes too, but... but, but be with Jesus, the Christ. And when you do, you're going to be blessed beyond measure. You're going to know the why to the what. The why is always Jesus Christ. And the what? What we do is because we have a relationship with Jesus Christ. And why we do it? So everybody can have that same relationship. Lord Jesus, we give you thanks. 
for the calling you've placed upon each of our lives, Lord God. We give you thanks, Lord, for, for, for kind of calling us to task every once in a while when we wrestle with you, that it seems like every day, Lord God, that you always seem to win, but you win for us, Lord God. Keep us in your stead. May we step back just a little bit from, our, from the haste of our day and, and, and our calendars that seem to be uh, always filled up and just have us take the time to be with you, Lord God. Uh, fill our hearts, fill our souls with that power in your presence. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You know what I was thinking? What's that? The people at Panera, you know, you're saying they're, they're hearing what you guys are talking about. But I wonder if they're all going, is that really Terry Bradshaw over there? <laughs> <laughs> That's a compliment. <laughs> Okay. Don't say your famous line. Don't do it. No, I'm not. I'm <laughs> Let's gonna, stand, everybody. I'm going to stand here and take it, Chuck. Okay. Let's see. But you said some powerful things. You said a mouthful when you used the metaphor, the example of a friend. If you want to introduce and get to know somebody or them to know you, you've got to talk. You've got to engage. And that word is alive and active whether we read it or not. But only when we read it does it come into our lives. Amen? Amen. That was powerful, Tom. That was... Great devotional this week. Great message. I'm sure the post-it notes helped. You want to sing with us? Yeah, I love this. What song is it? Dave's Elijah. Okay. <laughs> Usually Tom asks what song it is before he will, he's agreeing to sing. He's, he depends. All right, we're going to need your hand clapping again, but you guys will feel the beat. You guys are going to clap. You guys are going to be the heartbeat of believers today. Amen? Amen. 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 These are the days of Elijah, declaring the word of the Lord. And these are the days of your servant Moses, righteousness being restored. And though these are days of great trials, of famine and darkness and sore, still we are the voice in the desert crying, prepare ye the way. Of the Lord, behold, He comes riding on the clouds, shining like the sun. At the trumpet call, lift your voice in the year of Jubilee, for out of Zion's hill, salvation comes. Keep your hands together, and these are the days of Ezekiel. The dry bones becoming as flesh. And these are the days of your servant David rebuilding a temple of praise. And these are the days of the harvest. The fields are as white in the world. And we are the laborers in your vineyard declaring the word of the Lord. Behold, he comes. Riding on the clouds, shining like the sun, at the trumpet call, lift your voice in the year of Jubilee, for out of Zion's hill salvation comes. There's no God like Jehovah, there's no God like Jehovah, there's no God like Jehovah, there's no God like Jehovah. 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 Behold, he comes, riding on the clouds, shining like the sun. At the trumpet call, lift your voice in the year of Jubilee. For out of Zion's hill, salvation comes. So lift your voice in the year of Jubilee. For out of Zion's hill, salvation comes. Father God, we thank you. We give you praise.
We thank you, and in the name of Jesus, we thank you for coming out of Zion's hill. For we knew that salvation is all we should ever need. And that salvation begins and ends in a confessing that Jesus is Lord and believing in our heart that God raised you from the dead. We thank you, Lord, for today. We thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to just be closer to you. Help us this week as we draw nearer to the King of kings and the Lord of lords who wants to be our friend. All these things we pray in Jesus' name. Shout out amen, everybody. One, two, three. Amen. amen. Have a great week, everybody. Behold, he comes riding on the clouds, shining like the sun at the trumpet call. Lift your voice in the year of Jubilee, for out of Zion's hill salvation comes. So lift your voice in the year of Jubilee, for out of Zion's hill salvation comes. Have a good week, everybody.